until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the information at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of, of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger first, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times, they keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manna that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. And so if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit. Until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How to enjoy covenant relationship. How to enjoy covenant relationship. Number one, by understanding covenant. Number two, through active consciousness of the covenant. Number three, by making demands of the partner or partners in the covenant. Number four, by faithfully discharging your own commitment in the covenant. This is the time for covenant. Let's learn it. Hallelujah. Folks, Listen, put an end to the suffering. Put an end to the sickness. Put an end to the disease. End them. End them. End them. End the disease. End the sickness. End the poverty. End the lack. End, 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 end. You know why? Because the Lord has become your exceeding great reward. Meaning the Lord has become your available substance. You now own the Lord by covenant. That's what he told Abraham. He said, I'm your exceeding great reward. That means all that I am and all that I own, you can now own them. All you need is to just make a covenant with me. You see that? And then, when you make a covenant with me, all that I own, you now own. Are you getting it? But then, the other side of it is that all that you own, I now own. And so what does that mean? So through you, I can own children. 
I look for for it. Through you, my eternal purpose can be established. Because I said it's a need-based relationship. That tells you God also has needs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God also has needs. Amen. Amen. What is the need of God? God needed a child with whom or through whom he could inherit all the earth that his eternal purpose may be fulfilled. Yes. Did you hear me? Needed a child through whom he could inherit all the earth to fulfill his eternal purpose, to fulfill his eternal purpose. Quickly. Back to Genesis 15. Quickly. 15. All right. We, we already read Like I said, I'm your ascent great reward. I told you what that means, right? Okay. So, listen. What do you mean by great reward? No. It says that, that doesn't mean to pay you back. It's saying, I'm your, I'm your substance without measure. I'm your substance without measure. Exceeding substance without measure. I am. So you can own all that I own. Are you listening to me? I am your substance in a city measure. And so let's run through it quickly. We're reading to verse 20 again. All right, because remember, chapter 12 was verse 20. This is verse 20. So let's continue. One, two, read. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? For the most part, it's just been God telling you what he will give him. What I am, what I am, what I am, what I am. Waiting for Abraham to ask for something. So that they can be on level terms. Abraham said, I go childless. What would you give me? Please sit. What would you give me? I go childless. God knew he has, he, he is childless. He knew from the beginning. He wanted the guy to say, so that, that will be the, 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 the point of covenant. The, 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 the thing to gain access. Abraham said, I go, Charlie. And God said, I, 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 I've been waiting for you to say that. I've been waiting for you to say that. Because I also, I go, childless. I go, childless. So this is a, a coming together of two childless folks. <laughs> I go, childless. Ah. And Abraham said, Lord, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliza of the Mascos. Next verse. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Heir, heir. Eliza was to own everything. Please sit. And Abraham said, Next verse, next verse. Come on, run me, run me through. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, say, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven. And that is that if thou be able to know about them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Next verse, read. One, two, read.
You know, in the blood covenant, listen carefully. When I said it's a blood covenant, right? So what happens is this. Listen, God said, Abraham, take animals, right? And split them. So he split them in two and put a part to his left and a part to his right. God, what they do in covenant is that you, you kill the animal, right? Let the blood spill out as sign of the blood covenant. And then both parties will go in between to ratify the covenant as, as a sign that they have become blood covenant partners and that the blood wherein is the life is a witness. Are you listening to me? So they provide substitutes because God, where will God get blood? So God brought what is his, which is the animals for the covenant, they say, and they split it apart and, and the burning furnace you find here he says, and it came to pass when the sun went down, it was that behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. That was the presence of God. The presence of God passed through those pieces. That was his commitment. That day he had pledged to be a covenant partner with Abraham. God's presence passed in between. Are you listening to me? God passed in between those pieces. That today, I pledge myself to you as your covenant partner. So that was how they ratified the covenant. Are you listening to me? So that was how they ratified the covenant. That means signed the agreement. Do you understand that? You know the word ratify? Ratify means to sign or give Former consent to sign or give formal consent to a treaty, contract, or agreement, making it officially valid. So, rather than God signing on a piece of paper, he walked in between those pieces, ratifying the covenant. Are you getting it? And listen, he, look at me, he never forgets, like we read earlier, he never forgets covenant. That, is that correct? God says, I can never forget covenant. The man can forget covenant. Right? So how was Abraham going to remember the covenant? We'll get to that. Finish this one. Verse 18. One, two, Read. Okay. Chapter seventeen. Chapter 17 from verse 1. I need you to read a couple of things because it's important. Chapter 17 from verse 1. Everybody, let's go. Let's go quickly. One, two, read. Stop. What do you think God meant by walk before me and be that perfect? It simply means keep your part of the covenant. That's it. Keep your part of the covenant. That's it. Walk before them without part. No. What does that mean? Walk, keep your part of the covenant. You see, God, I, I walked in between those pieces and I will never forget. You too, keep your own part of the covenant. Hey, don't miss this. Do not miss this. Keep your own part of the covenant. Keep your own part of the covenant. Are you still here? Keep your own part of the covenant. How do I prove what I just said is correct? Let me show you. Next verse. Let's go. Stop, stop, stop. I thought in verse, in chapter 15, he already said, we make covenant, and he passed in between. So what do you mean by I will make my covenant? That's not correct. 
That's not what God said. Verse 1, it says, what before me and behalf That means keep your own part of covenant. Verse 2, it says, I will also keep my part of the covenant. That's what he's saying. He's not trying to make another covenant. Yes, sir. He's saying, I will also keep my part of the covenant. Well, sir. By multiplying thy seed. That's what he's saying. Are you guys seeing what I'm talking about? Yes, he's very straightforward. Yes, Regardless of the English. Go before me and be thou perfect means keep your own part of the covenant. Verse 2, I will also keep my part of the covenant and I multiply the exceedingly. I keep my part. Keep your part, I'll keep my part. But Abraham, why is God Abraham to keep his part? Because up until that time, up until that time, please see that, there was no proof or evidence that Abraham would keep his part. There needed to be something for Abraham to assure God that he would keep his part of the covenant. And so what did God do? He said, you will have to circumcise. And that will be the seal of the covenant. Are you listening to me? Yes, that will have to be the seal. That means every time you look on your circumcision, it reminds you that you're in the covenant with God. That's what the wedding ring means in this present day. It's supposed to remind you of the seal of the covenant. The wedding ring. Please sit. Are you still here? So, he said, circumcise. But let me say this to you. It is spiritually imperative that you honor a covenant. It is spiritually imperative that you honor a covenant. Otherwise, it ceases to have significance as a covenant. Otherwise, it ceases to have significance as a covenant. Did you get that? You must honor a covenant. And it depends on, on the terms of the covenant. All right? But I just want to make sure when I wrap up this meeting at this point, I'll be satisfied in myself that there's something you're holding on to. Quickly. Go on to 17. Let's go. 17, quickly. A little more. All right, next verse. One, two, read. Did you see that? A token, a seal of the covenant. A seal of the covenant. And so every time you look on that circumcision, you remember you're in a covenant with God. Hallelujah. And it says it's an everlasting covenant. 
an everlasting covenant. It shall be an everlasting covenant. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I just want to see how much I can take with you and walk away till we meet again. Oh boy. Isaiah 28, 15. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Want to read. Next verse. Please, I, I took that for a reason. How do people make covenant with death and agreement with hell? What they do is they pledge their seeds to death and say, you shall not take me. Sit down. These are demonic agreements. They will come by pledging their allegiance to devils with sacrifices and say, oh spirit of death, we come to you. We pledge that we trust in your power to deliver and to prolong we want to live long. In fear of death, we want to live long. But if at any time you hunger for blood, let's give you our seed. But don't take our blood that we may live long. Oh, dead, do not send us to hell because we want to live long. But when you are in need of blood, we shall produce our seed. And so you hear and see a situation where the man or the woman is getting older old and older, living longer, but the children are dying around. It happens very well. Everywhere. So, a number of these people, they give themselves to demons through a medium. It could be a native doctor, a ritualist, a narcotic priest. They do these things. Because these are people... Who, who contact devils, just like the witch at Endor, who had the spirit of witchcraft, just the way the Holy Ghost flows through us, just the way I come to Bishop and say, thus says the Lord, I am a medium, and God speaks to him. That's how people also give themselves to spirits, demonic spirits, who speak through them. So most of those native doctors you see are mediums. That's why he said you shall not seek to mediums. Oh, yes, sir. These are mediums through whom evil spirits operate. Evil spirits operate. Please sit. And so God said, you are confident now because you think death has agreed not to take you. Hell shall not find you. He said, but there's an overflowing scourge, an overriding scourge coming that will sweep everything on his path. When he comes, even death will not save you. Because I have a higher authority over death. 
And when it comes, it will sweep you and death will fail you. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Number one, it shows you the power of covenant. So most of people make it with death. Because death is not supposed to violate that agreement even though death cannot be trusted. Satan, I can trust Satan. It's not in him to be faithful. He would have stayed, he would have read Lucifer. Hallelujah. Precious sons and daughters, I said it is spiritually imperative that you honor a covenant, otherwise it ceases to be valid. Psalms 50. Quickly. One, two, read. Next verse. All right. Verse 5. No, no, no. It's mine to read. Gather my... Now, if you, if, if, I don't know if you watch it carefully, but I was telling you something. Oh, my goodness. Sarcoma, I go la sebre ita. Did you read in the book of Ezekiel? I'll tell you the chapter in a bit. You see, I said I was in a vision and I saw six men come from the, I think from the east or something like that. He said, and as they came, they were dressed in a certain apparel. Can I read it to you quickly? I want to give you a proper understanding of this context. Ezekiel chapter 9. From verse 1. So verse 6. I want you guys to watch something carefully about this covenant thing. It, this will help you a lot about us as we move on to the BD covenant later tonight and spirits and sacrifices. I want to read. All right. These are angels, okay? They were angels. So God tells us there are angels that have charge over cities. There are also demons. That's what we call, we call territorial demons that are giving charge. Just where God gives angels charge over cities, Satan also gives demons charge over cities. And so the cities find themselves in turmoil based on who is prevailing and who is having the greater authority. Do you understand that? All right, quick, everybody. I want to see something now. All right, let's go. The next verse, I want to read. Pause. Now, six angels came. Watch me. Look at me. Six angels came. Take it from the screen. Six angels came and remove from the screen. Six angels came and the Lord said to Ezekiel was watching things play out and I said to the angels, slay, go into the city and destroy. Right? But before you do that, the one man among them had the writer's income. He says, go among the city. That's the one man. 
place a mark on the intercessors. All right? Place a mark on the intercessors. So when you place a mark on the intercessors, while the angels are destroying others, the intercessors will be spared. So these intercessors have found refuge in God through intercession. So God recognizes their works and keeps them from the destruction. Are you there? So God says, do not come near the intercessors. Place a mark on their heads. But don't have mercy on children. You see why he says, stay not your children where you should go. Because destruction doesn't know old or young. Quickly. Quickly. Are you done with that? Let's go back to the screen. Uh, next verse, one to read. You know what that means? To the one man, this is what he said, right? Place a mark. To the rest five, this is what he's saying. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I want to read and understand as we close. One, two, read. Stop. Did you see that? So, this was destruction determined that was set in motion in the city. I want you to see how, how these mirrors what I am about to show you in Psalm 50. So, this is destruction determined. In Psalm 50, this is that's another destruction determined. But this time around, remember this, in this Ezekiel, it was a mark that set them apart. In Psalm 50, it is a sacrifice in covenant that sets apart. Let me show you. Psalm 50. I want you guys to look at verse 4, please. Verse 4. Okay, can we start from verse 1 again? Can everybody look at this quickly? Look at everybody. One, two, read. All right, so what do you see? Judgment determined. Then it says, pause. Before the judgment, verse 5, before the judgment, gather my sins together unto me. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Gather my sins together unto me. And then the distortion says, do you mean all saints? He says no. Not all saints. So which saints? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see daily covenant seed? What I do? You know what I do with it? To keep from the destruction of any kind. That's why I call it the covenant of safety. Deliverance from destruction. The brutalness to stand when destruction has passed. Enlargement to keep increasing and never decrease. Longevity. Safety. It starts with prosperity, remember? Prosperity, safety, deprotedness, enlargement, longevity. It is not consistent with the nature of a kingdom to coexist with non-subjects. The kingdom preaches conquering and influencing to bring to subjection. Kingdom is the sphere where God's influence is most palpable and tangible.
by just giving the Lord our offerings, our tithes, our first fruits, and our seeds. Go ahead. Yes, you are worthy of our praise. To you are hearts for you are awesome in this place, mighty God. Lord, we honor you with our offerings for promotion for the God plan of life. Lord, we enter into the God plan of life with our offerings, our tithes, our seeds, and all. And we continually walk in that plane. And it shall be said of us, happy are thou, O T G A. Who is in such a case where there's no breaking in or breaking out? Where there's no complaint in our streets? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. And we receive the harvest in all that we give in hundredfold to your praise and glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the saints said, and good life has said. When you're born into this world, you are working to the physical realm. As you train your mind and get enlightened, you are mentally awakened. So there's physical awakening, mental awakening. I said that there's a third one, which is the higher, is spiritual awakening. That's when you are awakened to the reality of God, angels, and all. When man comes into this world, he's awakened to the physical world, physical awakening. Then when his mind is trained, he becomes mentally awakened. But he's still dead. Not dead physically, but dead to the reality of God. Because when the scripture talked about death, it refers to what you are insensitive to. What you are not alive to. By virtue of Adam's sin, man died. Not physical death, spiritually. By spiritual death, it means we're cut off from the life of God and we became unresponsive to the realities of God. When the life came, we were awakened. Not physically awakened, not mentally awakened. We were awakened spiritually. We were awakened to the realities of angels of God and the spiritual realm. Suddenly, man knows that God is a reality. God is true. God is no longer just an idea. The light makes God real in your heart. The awakening that that light brought is called light. You can have the life that receives the glow of God right now. And suddenly you find that the things you once called foolishness are actually realities. Are great verities. So what do I do to have that life? What do I do to give God a room in my life? Become his child. How do I become the child of God? It is by declaring this word of prayer with me right now. Say after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification today I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior I ask for the remission of sins of my soul I ask for eternal life of my spirit and by faith I receive the remission of sins in my soul. I receive eternal life from my spirit. And I declare I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 
Today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer. Open your mouth right now and pray with me in, in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. Say, so how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Praise God. Praise God. Ibragina Sakradi Meredose Frokitaba Rabashi Kabela Endo Cobra Irakata Labroko Rabakashi Beredidi Poso Frekedele Manda Krista Rabababa Bokosu in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the spirit of dominion. The spirit of lordship. By the Holy Ghost. I trample. And crush to pieces. This day. All my worries. All my cares. All my sorrows, all my troubles, all my limitations, I declare where these are bounded, grace did much more abound. By the abundance of your grace, I rule over them. From today, today, they shall no longer longer have dominion dominion over me. me. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, I subdue them. I them. I I rule over them. For as it is written, the Egyptians, you see today, you shall see them. No more. more. I declare declare these challenges, these worries, worries, these cares, cares, these troubles troubles, that I see today today, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I shall see them them no more. more. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead. You have dominion over them by the Holy Ghost. Dominion over sin, dominion over poverty, dominion over fear, dominion over lack, dominion over anxiety, dominion over suicidal thought, dominion over same sex desires, dominion over fornication, dominion over immorality, dominion over infertility, dominion, dominion by the Holy Ghost, Lava Ponte, Lake Bosanto, Luba Haya, Luba Haya. Monto Kobo Shaha, Lee Habana Minto Kobo, Ira Baselemanto, Ira Boko Tokoto, Ipa Yatata, Tones of Emidaya, Tones of Emidaya, Luhabaha, Luhabaha, Sibo Cambregizo, Rene Prate, Paris and the Game and Rigo, Broke up with Gabri Selemindo. If I die, I saw me on the Gaba. Julie Apodeza. Jube Gamina, Missy Pari Pataka. 
Zofia Tida, Zofia Tiza, Pelo Sonfugima, Skopri Ostovino, Liga Prikistelo Mindagristi, Vri Azomindo Opro Kabisa, Zaki Da Ipro Kotogrisa La Mantri, Biza Fatana, Biza Fatana, Kure Konje Ego Pela, Lotto Patagahi, Zayi Pacanino Epacata, Adabro Coco, Alati Pandrima, Alagi Bogoko, Adibo Separatis, Korabata. We have the rule over them. Bless the God who has given us the victory. By the victory of Christ, I decree we crush the pieces. We have the rule, we have the dominion, we have the rule, the influence, the authority, the power over these limitations, over these troubles, these challenges. We look for them, we find them no more. By the Holy Ghost, through the abundance of grace, we subdue them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I would advise you to hold a triumphant amen when I say that. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, this is giving reality to expectations to her desires. So say after me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and I receive I possess I have ownership of these desires of these expectations why it is called today by the, Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, I declare, I declare as, it as it is written, all things, all things are, yours. are yours. Therefore, Therefore I, take I take ownership of these, of these, of these. Of these. Today, today, I declare, I declare these, expectations these expectations have become, have become my reality. My reality. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Speak another tongue. So to the lays of Babi at the re and the grass of a Mali call for face the eyes come in. Broke a pila and madalo of Kufrido. You repent the best if a dab the deal. Java light of the poor, I mean the glassila. Billy a poor mean to a dive the days of days of poor for Tata. Bikani mesu for pet the devil. Lutis avis. In the meaning of the name of the Lord, Do 
Jesus.